Yeah, she was huge last year in the World Series, in particular the championship series when they had to rally from a game down to beat Florida State for the title. Interestingly enough, last year they also lost their opener here to James Madison and had to fight their way out of the loser's bracket. Patty Gasso in her 28th season looking for a fifth title in nine years, the dynasty that is Oklahoma. And that is the challenge for these Northwestern Wildcats. They've already watched Texas upset the winningest program in history, UCLA, earlier today. And they are indeed a softball school. Yep, there you go. Look at, oh, they've got more drip than GPA, too. Did you see that? <laughs> okay. There are the lone purple reps in the city. Skyler Schellmeyer, fun to watch in this leadoff spot. 69 hits, 22 of those are slaps in the infield, and 10 more of those are bunts. Tremendous speed. And a punch out for Hook Troutline, one down. And well, that's the low rise ball that Hook Troutline can throw on that corner. You can see the way Kenzie Hansen is going to be down on one knee to give a really good look to the umpire. She's been hammering that low outside part of the zone to Schellmeyer. First out of the game. He's a strikeout looking. And a smile from Troutline, the transfer from North Texas. Last year, the Conference USA Pitcher of the Year and wanted the challenge of playing for a national championship. This pitching staff with the top ERA in the country alongside Nicole May and the recently injured Jordy Ball. There is a chance that Jordy could still make an appearance in the circle here at the World Series, according to Patty Gasso. And it is Kenzie, Kenzie Hansen getting the start behind the plate catching for Trout Line as Rachel Lewis steps in the fifth year who came back exclusively for this opportunity wanted to help her team get to oklahoma city and she did just that hansen has been platooning behind the plate most of the season with lindsey elam who will get the start at first base that gives him a solid right-handed bat tail and snow has been struggling at the plate Although Talon has been great defensively, only one error in the last two seasons, we could still see her as a defensive replacement. And Lewis draws the walk and a one-out base runner. <laughs> what they are lacking in quantity, the Northwestern fans are already making up for in quality. Well, they are uh, trying to... Get behind their team. Right behind their dugout. It's always a challenge when both Oklahoma and Oklahoma State are here, which is the case this season. They tend to get a lot of the tickets. By the looks of it, they get all the tickets except for this one <laughs> section <laughs> that Northwestern is owning. Purple hair, purple signs. And they are loud, considering they are like 180th of the entire stadium. Look at Eileen Canny and Tammy Williams in the front row, part of that 2016. They all win the national championship. The alums coming out. Made it to the finals that year. Rug pops it right back up to Trout Line, two down. We'll get into the special bond between those 2006 and 2007 World Series teams and this current bunch of cats. One of the things that Northwestern has leaned on heavily and will continue to do so, a tremendous bunch of upperclassmen, including Maeve Nelson, the senior from the Chicagoland area. They have seven upperclassmen in the lineup. Maeve comes in on a six-game hit streak. 
batting 429 in the postseason, way up from her season average. Four-year starter at short for the Cats. Here's a look at Kate Drohan, her sister Carol works with the hitters, and former Oklahoma Sooner Michelle Gascoigne works with her pitchers. The Gascan, a national championship game winner with the Sooners back in 2013. Another fly ball, Grace Lyons. Big 12 defensive player of the year has got it. Use that to try to take the power away from Oklahoma. So open up with Jada Coleman, who is one of just two left-handers in the batting order today for Oklahoma. Sooners started out the year really setting the tone with a 38 and 0 record. That's the best start in softball history before they lost a game to Texas. Their only other loss in the Big 12 final in the tournament right here on this field to Oklahoma State. Otherwise, they have been chopping people up. Thirty-two shutouts, thirty-eight run rule wins. They have been number one wire to wire. And are averaging close to ten runs per game this year. Three and one to Jada Coleman. Sophomore out of the colony in Texas. Got a five game hitting streak here in the postseason. The Sooners five and oh, outscoring opponents 52 to three. It's a curveball on the inside corner. We like to call it a backdoor curve in softball. Throw it at the knee. The way she buckled, she thought it was going to hit her, but comes back over the plate. Full count. Struck her out, and there it is. The change up, one down. And here comes Jocelyn Allo. Statistically already one of the best careers in the history of the game, as her coach Patty Gasso told us yesterday, she's already left a legacy. And at this Women's College World Series, it's all about finding that cherry to put on top of that big old Sunday. One of the coolest things, though, is how she came in her freshman year and the mechanical adjustments that JT Gasso, the hitting coach for Oklahoma, has done for so many of these hitters, but really got in with Jocelyn Allo. She was always so strong, so talented, but you get away with a lot in travel ball. And you come in, Division One, you get humbled real quick, and she talked about surrendering her swing. And what you'll see a lot of these Oklahoma hitters do the way they utilize their body. To put themselves in a great position to hit. When you watch Jocelyn Allo, there's three things you look at. Look at the coil into that back leg and then the hip turn, which ignites her power. You see how her hands are back while her hip is firing? Then that bat to ball skill is like none other. What JT Gasso found was the exit velocity to get her body in that position exploded. It's a unique style, too. In fact, he talked about Michael Lotif. You remember head, head coach at University of Louisiana, Lafayette? How he went to a baseball conference, heard him speak, and it completely changed the way that he coached these hitters. Patty Sun deals with the hitters. Jen Rocha, the pitchers. That's fouled out of play by Alo. That was at the start of her career, now at the tail end. You know, we talk about all the history this team can make. There has never been a player in the history of our game that has hit 500 with 30 home runs and 80 RBI. Allo can get there with a monster World Series. 
Another 3 2 count. She went to the changeup to get Jada Coleman. What'd she do here? Missed it away, and Allo draws the walk. Did not give Jossie the change. You know, I like the sequencing so far, especially to the righties. I mean, the fact that she can come inside under the hands with that curveball, the changeup, Smitty, that you talked about. Jerry Jennings, the sophomore second baseman from San Pedro, California. First pitch to Jennings is the changeup. Doesn't get the call, but using that pitch, coming right back with it. She can. I've seen her throw three of them in a row, four of them in a row. She just hides it so well. You can tell. You can tell by the way Tiari started triggering there and then was like, wait, hold up. Jennings, the two-time first-team All-American who led the country last year, set a new freshman RBI record with 92. She's up over 70 of them again this year. Grew up watching and idolizing Sidney Romero, another Southern Californian who was here with Oklahoma winning national championships in 2016 and 2017. The drive out to Zedak, and Angela tracks it down out in left center. That'll chase Allo back to first, two down. She'll pass a little intel on to Grace Lyons. Grace, a fabulous regular season. And continuing into the postseason, a 400 hitter with some pop, over 20 home runs. Big, big thing for Grace is to stay cool in this arena. She has not statistically played well at the plate in her first few appearances in the World Series. Looking to change that this year. Change up again. Grace has had good numbers, though, against Danielle Williams, four for seven with a home run. And one of the things that she's definitely changed this year is seeking one pitch, having in her mind something that she is sitting on that she can drive. I think that'll be the question as this game goes on, how many Sooners start to sit on the changeup. And then the cat and mouse game yep. of the pitch calling. You show it early and often, and then maybe pull it away. No one wanted to bite at that changeup. Grace Lance looking middle away. And a call strike three gets Lions. Well, it's great to see the enthusiasm around the entire athletic department. The ground ball to Tiari Jennings at second one down. Mickey Cochran is retired. Five, six, and seven here for Northwestern. It all dates back to, to those the 2006-2017s. Uh, this is their first trip back since. This is the highest seed they've had since those days. They come in as the nine seed. Another Big Ten regular season championship for Northwestern. Longtime head coach Sharon Drysdale, who they're 
Right. Got them to the World Series three times before the Drohans arrived. She's in the house today. Well, and really, you know, the 06, 07 teams put Northwestern on the, the softball map because yeah. they didn't just make an appearance, making it all the way to the national championship game, upsetting a lot of big teams along the way to get to Arizona. Well, they, they in some ways are, are beneficiaries of the new champ series system, the changes in the game. Remember Michigan back in 2005, it's already 17 years ago that this new format with a championship series started. They were the first team east of the Mississippi River to ever win the championship. It was a West Coast dominated tournament for a long time. That opened the door for teams like Northwestern for the growth of the SEC and the ACC. A lot of pride in the Midwest. Well, starting with Coach Hutch, with the recently retired Jackie Joseph at Michigan State. And you know they're all rooting for the Cats wherever they might be watching today. This was a great season for the Big Ten. You look at what Nebraska did, Michigan, Northwestern. Yeah. Seven teams in the NCAA yeah. tournament. Ohio State had a great year. Had a base runner in the first, Rachel Lewis, but otherwise Hope Troutwine in control. Three two to Zedak, and she draws the walk. So a couple of free passes. Here comes Hannah Cady, sophomore out of Clipston, Michigan. A couple of home runs in the Super Regional. No questions about how gritty this team is. They trailed in the deciding game of the Supers 5-0. Kept their wits about them. Came back, chipped away at the deficit, and ended up winning the game to get here. It's a Northwestern team with a big belief system. I think they proved that out in the desert against ASU. Coming back from those deficits, I mean, in the postseason, that can be hard to do. You're always facing really good arms. Got under that one, Riley Boone. Two down. She almost lost that in the sun. Wow. Let's see her blinking, no visor, no shades. It's been uh, overcast for the better part of the last few days here in Oklahoma City. Sun starting to peek through, a little bit of a glare. Yeah, she need. Oh, okay. Close the eyes on that one. She lost at the last second, but thank goodness she was already in the right position. There's Sydney Supley. That's the start at the designated player position out of Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Just four hits for Sydney during this NCAA tournament, but three of those drove in a run. Troutline tried to get her to fish. Troutline's been working a two-seam fastball low. She does throw also a two-seam rise ball. She can throw that low and elevated, trying to work that lower half of the zone. One-two pitch, got her. Couple of walks, but no damage done. Danielle Williams back to work against Lindsey Elam. Five, six, and seven do up. Ironically enough, the team they lost to Arizona in the finals that year, 
led by Caitlin Lowe, who is back here with Arizona as their first year head coach. They're playing later tonight against Oklahoma State and a base knock for Elam. First hit for OU. Elam coming early in the count, looking away. And we've seen a lot of Oklahoma hitters sitting middle away. Haven't seen a whole lot of middle away, but Elam gets one here. Gets around it. First knock for the Sooners. That'll bring up Kinsey Hansen. She's been slowed by injuries much of the season. A knee issue, an ankle issue. Can she regain her World Series form from a year ago when she hit over 350 with three home runs in helping to lead the Sooners to the championship? So far in the tournament, only three at-bats. Patty Gasso wanted to get another right-handed bat. That's had a lot of success in the past into this lineup. Patty back here for the 50th time for the NFCA Hall of Famer. There's Patty's posse, of course, in the house. A little in Patty we trust hat, and why not? Six trips to the championship series in the last nine years. In fact, in the finals, Oklahoma or Florida in 10 of the last 13 seasons. They are both here with a, another shot at it this year. Florida coming up later tonight. Take it on Oregon State. One, two to Hanson. Back to back with the change. And that is definitely going to be a pitch. These hitters are going to know, especially second time through, they're going to see a lot of it. We have not seen a batter for Oklahoma yet not get a changeup. That's absolutely a big part of her game. She did that against ASU last week in Supers. It's one of those changeups that even when you know it's coming, it's still hard to hit. Hanson. Throws the third by Katie, fires over the first double play. Great job by the defense of Northwestern. Katie in a great position to pick this off the ground immediately over to Cochran at first. Look at the way she's going to go down and get that. Immediately knows secondary play. I've got to go and try and get it. Lindsay Elam slightly off the bag. Double her up. Big double play to help Williams out here in the second. Two down for Alyssa Brito, who has taken over out in left field, the transfer from Oregon. Alyssa's picked up a hit in 10 of her last 12 games. One of the things that Patty Gasso talked to us about with a lot of these newcomers, you know, she said last year in our opener here, losing to JMU, there was a little bit of deer in the headlights from some of our players. They did not play the way they had all season. And she wanted to make sure that her veterans were helping out the newcomers and adjusting and getting used to this kind of environment and making sure they come to town with what Patty Gasso calls the championship mindset, which is been such a big part of this Oklahoma dynasty. But it's Williams keeping the and Oklahoma, those top three are all in town. So are the Florida Gators who went back to back in 2014 and 2015. Four former champs are here, four teams, including Northwestern looking for a first championship ring.
nine. And then the top of the order, this is Grace Nito. Starting second baseman, hitting 353 so far in the NCAA tournament. Another Midwesterner. NCAA tournament, they're batting nearly 350. Nine runs a game, they've hit 10 home runs. They talk to us about hunting pitches, they talk to us how the weight room work has paid off late in the season. They're fresher, they're well rested, they're stronger. And one of the concerns for Kate Drohan was, OU gets a lot of swing and miss, Smitty, up in the zone, so they gotta watch the rise at the eyes from Troutwine which is where she's been going. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they play some small ball, if they do some hit and runs. They have a lot of speed. They've got 82 stolen bases on the year. I just find it fascinating this time of year, trying to get people out of their comfort zone in the defense. That if you're not on base, you can't steal bases. True. So. Couple of walks though for Northwestern yes. so far, but they haven't been able to move anybody. And a couple of strikeouts for Trout One. Here's the one, two, away. the third for Hope, one down. Let's send it down to Holly Rowe. Okay, I am with the Mount Rushmore of Northwestern <laughs> softball. Uh, Tammy Williams, Eileen Candy, Garland Cooper. What is it like for you to be back here supporting this young team? Oh my gosh, it's just absolutely amazing. It's so fun to see the Cats back here. We're so proud of them and the energy of this team. Eileen, you jumped in and did some coaching this year. What did you add to this group? I just wanted them to love who they are. I just wanted them to be happy and celebrate what they do well, and they're clearly doing it really well. <laughs> okay, one of the greatest hitters in Northwestern history, Garland, how are they swinging the bats? They're doing great. I uh, just want them to keep taking their cuts, and I think it'll pay off. All right, this is so cool. It feels like yesterday you ladies were out here playing. Congratulations, <laughs> and good to see you back. Yes, go Cats! Go Cats! Oh, great to see them. That's awesome. Garland Cooper came over to Japan after she graduated from Northwestern and played against her. Man, she could swing it. She could feel the air when she would have. Yeah, I mean, Tammy Williams, yeah. it wasn't a full game if she uh -uh. didn't leave the field bloodied at some yep. point. Usually to other people. <laughs> she was fierce on the field. And Jordan Rudd, the catcher for Northwestern, intern with Tammy Williams. She works at a law firm. I mean, I felt like they were saying that about all the connections. They, yeah, she's a partner at this law firm yeah. and the intern Investment within. firms, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Their biggest disappointment was they, they somehow did not win the academic award here at the Women's College World Series uh, the other day at the banquet. They thought they were going to grab that one. Yeah, they were competitive even with that. And another strikeout for Troutwine. That is three in a row, and she's gotten Schellmeyer twice to keep the leadoff in the dugout. Schellmeyer typically very strong in that leadoff spot with that slap, but she induces the swing and miss by going upstairs with the rise ball. She throws it a little sweet over the plate, and that's one of the keys for a really good rise ball pitcher is that you put it over the white part of the plate. It looks like a big strike. It gets up in your eyes, and you miss as you swing through it. Now let's hear from someone who never swung at rise balls out of the zone. <laughs> Jess? I'll tell you what, I always say, if, if you can greet it, you, or you meet it, you can greet it on out of here because you connect with that pitch, and that's why you swing. I think people at home, they watch, why is she swinging at the ball with her eyes? Well, it goes a long way. Just takes one, and then you're hooked. And I do have to say that about Hope, too. I mean, I, I do feel like that is the one thing, being a rise ball pitcher, is you will give up home runs with that. And she'll throw it down in the zone. We just saw that last strike, a rise ball. That's the cookie zone. So you kind of risk it going there to then set up the one out of the zone. Ooh, behind Rachel Lewis. She's got some pop in that bat. The challenge, though, with Oklahoma is they really just don't give you much 
to hit out of the ballpark, only nine home runs hit off of Sooner pitchers all season. Remarkable over a 56 game yeah. campaign so far. Best DR in the country, they don't walk a lot of people. And we talk a lot about the offense for Oklahoma, but this pitching staff has been outstanding. The defense behind them. This is the matchup by circle, though, coming in. I mean, you got the Big yes. Ten Player of the Year in Rachel Lewis, and the battles and the understanding of the strike zone that she has. You have the lowest ERA in the country with Hope Trout, Troutwine. It's kind of the battle that you're looking for. I love the way that Kenzie Hansen was pointing at herself, saying, trust me, give me this low outside pitch. So Rachel Lewis gets a hold of one, back it goes, and gone! Northwestern in front! There's a reason why you circle the matchup, and you look at these players and honestly Rachel Lewis and what she's done talk to her yesterday she was so confident in her understanding of what Oklahoma pitchers could bring and honestly it's not even that she drives an inside pitch out of the park it's the pitch she took before that to get to that count to get to the zone with two strikes she was looking for just a great overall at bat with some foul balls to then get the barrel where she needed to and get Northwestern on the board just the third home run and only the seventh earned run off of Hope Trout line all year, and it's one nothing cats. How about Lucas? 23 home runs on the year. She can run, she steals bases, she hits for power. Mm -hmm. 26 stolen bases. Yeah. Well, what did Kate Rohan said? She arrived a hitter, and now she is a ball player has rounded out all of her skills. Hits for average, hits for power. Even Mendoza doesn't want to get in the weight room. No, no thanks. <laughs> she showed video of squatting 300 pounds. <laughs> and she did the full dip, folks. Oh, yeah. She didn't cheat it. Talked about playing flag football, soccer, basketball, lacrosse, bobsled. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you don't hear that mix of sports <laughs> leading to softball. Do you play bobsled or yeah, do you yeah. just bobsled? You mm -hmm. sled, you bob. sled, sled the bobsled. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now they're going to be mad at us. Seven hits for Rachel in this postseason, and three of those have left the yard. Here we go, let's go live now to the waiting room, Rachel Lewis. <laughs> That's what she's doing after a home run. 300 pounds, watch the weight move as she goes down too, and how low. Oh, oh man. I feel the burn in my thighs. Strong, spectacular. Daughter of a softball player. Her mom, Lisa. Was good back in her day. Oh, and I think she just got the home run ball. The tradition continues here at the World Series. Your kid hits one out, they bring it back to you. I love it. A lot of softball mm -hmm. daughters that we talk to on these eight teams. Oh, the 40th year of the Women's College World mm -hmm. Series, 50 years of Title IX. We now have moms that yes. are watching their daughters, moms that played the sport, watching their daughters play their sport. Smitty, I think we're close to like even grandmother territory now with some of those early teams yeah. back in the 80s. Yeah. Great to see. The parody and the upsets around the entire tournament this year is a continuing. We've already had an upset today. Texas over UCLA. Northwestern in front of Oklahoma, but of course you do not want to count those Sooner bats out just yet.
Yeah, grandmother Sheila Cornell Dowdy, her granddaughter played at Michigan. Yeah. So there you go. Olympian. Yep. Played on the 96 and 2000 Olympic team. Amazing hitter. Lou transferred to Liberty, I believe. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Dot for Dot. Your yeah. former teammate. teammate on yeah. the Olympics, Dr. Don. Another 3 2 pitch. By the way, that home run, number 23, ties the single season record held by, up oh, on the other side of Eileen Kenny, held by Arlen Cooper. From those great teams back in the mid-2000 aughts. Jordan Rudd draws the walk. Well, the Sooners have not seen this before in the postseason. The first time in the last three weeks they have trailed in a ball game. Dominating the opposition going 5-0, and outscoring teams 52-3. to So this is big for the psyche of the Wildcats. Here's Maeve Nelson, popped to short in the first. And that'll get Jen Roach out of the dugout to chat with Trout Wine. There is a buzz from the folks in purple right now. Rachel Lewis, solo home run. And then a 1 0 lead. And the Women's College World Series continues with a double header tonight. And then we've got you covered all through the weekend and into the new championship series format which will have an off day now on Tuesday and game one on Wednesday night on ESPN Wednesday Thursday and if necessary next Friday go to NCAA.com the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships winner of this one gets the day off tomorrow they will play Texas Saturday afternoon 3 Eastern on ABC the loser has to come right back and play UCLA tomorrow night, win or go home. Oh. And first time to Nelson, one and one. Western second time through here is being very disciplined off that rise ball, the elevated rise ball. First time through the lineup, hope trot line through seven of nine first pitch strikes. Northwestern doing a good job of really trying to shrink that zone down. Three more. Is the fifth three ball count through the first three innings. Maeve Nelson growing up not far from Northwestern, actually got lessons from Tammy Wilson as a young kid. She was talking about being eight years old, working shortstop, hitting, 
idolized Tammy growing up, and then that was her instructor as a kid. Yeah. Now she's playing shortstop, same position, same school. Into the crowd. This is where it's tricky for Hope because right now, you know, you want to elevate that rise ball, get it up out of the zone for the swing and miss, but with a full count, the eyes of these Wildcats have been really good. Remember, Rachel Lewis was in a full count when she hit the home run, so you got to be really careful on what you throw her right now. Nelson has 12 home runs on the year. Second behind Lewis. They talk about these three righties in a row. You know, starting with Lewis to Jordan Rudd, Maeve Nelson, how much they communicate, help each other. And Maeve kind of laughs. She's like, I get to be the beneficiary because they go up before me. I get to see how they've been pitched. They tell me and then I get to have a chance. She draws the walk back to back. Two on with two out. Here's Holly. Well, guys, you've talked about it. Jordy Ball, who got a majority of the innings this season for Oklahoma, the national freshman of the year, suffered an arm injury to their throwing arm in the game two pregame of the Oklahoma State Series. She has not thrown since. And the pitcher and staff told us yesterday, Nicole May and Hope Troutwine, that when Jordy went down, there was a reality moment of like, oh my gosh, we're up, this is us. But then quickly that turned to, we've got her back just like we've had it all season long. Hope Troutwine threw a no hitter in Super Regionals against UCF. So there's a lot of confidence on this staff, but Hope Troutwine right now, these free passes, not showing a lot of confidence right now. Yeah, Holly, that's the fourth walk for Troutwine, second of the inning. Sammy Stanley has come on to pinch run out at second base. Looking to tag on to the Rachel Lewis home run from earlier in the inning. Here's Nikki Cochran. Senior from Downers Grove, Illinois. There's so much trust amongst this Northwestern team. They've all been playing together for four or five years, pretty much, when you throw in the COVID year as well. Out to left, Melissa Brito is there. They'll leave a couple on, but Rachel Lewis ties the school record with her 23rd tater of the season. With the speed of Boone hit the middles for Northwestern. They are way up inside the line here. Boone tees off on one and gets it over the head of Lewis to the base of the wall, and she'll slide in. Safe at second. What were we saying, Smitty? They pull them in. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and Riley Boone, I mean, she does utilize a ton of short game, but she's got some pop. She proved it here. So you want to come in on me? Well, let me take this ball that's up and in, get my barrel to it. Over the head of Rachel Lewis out in right field. That's a response after your team goes down one zip that you're looking for from the bottom of this Sooner lineup. That's her fifth double of the season. And now the tying run in scoring position for Janet Johns, the fifth year out of Columbus, or excuse me, Calhoun, Georgia, who started out her career in Columbia at South Carolina. Chance to tie it up. Base hit, and with boom speed, it'll do just that. And the Sooners are even. Well, it's interesting. Look at where the shortstop is going to be in this position here. This ball is going to go right back. It looks like it could be a routine ground ball because she's pulled into the 5-6 hole. It's a base hit up the middle. And they were playing that 5-6 hole, which Anna Johns tends to pull the ball, and I think they were trying to pitch her there, getting inside. We've seen some defensive shifting already on this opening day, but this ball finds its way, and Oklahoma finds its way back on this scoreboard. Boy, the last thing you want to do is give some momentum to the top of this order, because here they come now, all tied up. 
That'll just squirt foul. Well, and if you go back to both those hits, Boone, right, the defense was so far in. You've got to watch a couple pitches to actually see, is she bunning? Is she slapping? She was swinging away. Very lucky that that didn't end up getting a, you know, a triple or in the park home run. And then same thing with Johns, over shifting. It's tough to make those adjustments first time through the lineup when you're not 100% sure exactly what these the hitters are going to be doing. Second time through, let's see how they adjust to the changeup. Jada Coleman struck out on one of those in the first. One of three strikeouts for Danielle Williams the first time through. so important and you see it a lot here in the postseason to respond to an opponent's run with one of your own quickly grab that momentum back postseason but all year long just three percent of their plays what a remarkable number of course just the two losses on the season 38 one rule wins another base hit third in a row and here comes jocelyn Allo with two on Walked in the first, and you feel that buzz in the building when the, some of the all-time greats step to the plate here at the World Series, and the anticipation of an allo at bat. Coleman's hit off of the changeup. She struck out on the changeup in her first at bat. Got the base hit. I, I wonder it. if they, yeah, yes. hunting it exactly. They're making those adjustments. strategy here to pitch to Alo still with nobody out. She is already the career home run leader. She has rapidly moved up the charts and runs batted in as well. She is number four all time. Only the three Arizona sluggers from the mid-90s have more. Jenny Dalton, Leah Bratz, and Laura Espinoza. And it'll be interesting to see what they do if they unintentionally walk. week Sid Sanders the big freshman hitter for ASU they basically pitched around her they did not give her the opportunity to hurt them the difference is is that Oklahoma has a much stronger lineup behind Jocelyn to protect her she was homered in three consecutive games and five of her last six outings the wild pitch will move the runners up and now the go-ahead at third base Up and in, what a great look. See how close that got. Jocelyn Allo, barely missing her. Janet Johns at third with the RBI single. Jada Coleman now at second. 3-0, first base is open. Probably gonna be up to Tiara Jennings behind her here. And before you exhale, she's hit 24 home runs and is their RBI leader with Allo this year. And here she comes with the bases loaded. Go. 
Tiari threw out to left, first time up. Base is juiced, nobody out. You could tell that the Sooners were hunting the changeup. First pitch changeup in Tiari Jennings. Blast her third Grand Slam of the year. Look at the changeup. She identifies it. Look at her weight. It's back. Explosive. Her eyes light up. She gets all into that pitch and squeaks it over that 220 fence. The Sooners are celebrating. How quickly they can turn the tide on you from a 1-0 deficit to a 5-1 lead. Four hits and a walk, and still nobody out. And here's Grace Lyons. Home run number 139 on the season for the Sooner Sluggers. That's just first at bat to second at bat, you know, going back and understanding your charts. JT Gasso, the hitting coach, has got a clipboard that's right there. He goes before every player comes out of the dugout and he tells them what they've seen, what counts they've seen in it, and what to hunt. For Tiari Jennings, five pitches, her first at bat, two of them were change-ups. He's got that charted, they immediately come to him. It's part of the conversation before they go on deck, and it's like, hey, guess what? This is the pitch you're gonna see. Do you want to hit it? Get after it early. Well, and the other thing, these change-ups have been elevated. When you, as a pitcher, throw a change-up and you get it in the eyes of the hitter, it's much easier to see. Coleman's change-up, elevated base hit. Jennings, changeup elevated, it goes out of the park. The last changeup she just threw to Lyons in the dirt, swing and miss. Deep in the hole and it bounces off the glove of Nelson and Lyons is aboard. Let's revisit the slam. So Tiara Jennings, her first at bat, her hips were already triggered before, when that changeup's coming. Watch the position that she's in with her hips. She is sitting on this speed. Remember, this is 55 miles an hour, and the way her swing is tells me everything. Not only did it not fool her, but this is the pitch she wanted. It's the pitch she got, and she turned it around for four runs in the grand slam. The offensive numbers almost as good as last year when they set NCAA records for batting average and home runs and runs per game. You get the sense that they were a little irritated that they actually lost twice here last year. Once in the round robin part or in the uh, early rounds and then once in the champ series. If they can run the table, 59 and 2. That would certainly move them to the top of the list. It would be the best record in softball history. Deep fly ball. Shellmeyer is under it. One down. There's your list of single season home run records. Last year, 161. This year for OU, 139. Almost as good as hitting it out as uh, reliving it in the dugout with your buds. Yep. <laughs> when I ran like this. Yeah. <laughs> Jocelyn's like, yeah, I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Well, there is a patience and a sense of being at ease with yourself, right? I mean, the, the Ronnie Nelsons and the Stacy movements, they all had to learn how to deal with all the walks, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then if a home run pitch comes your way for Jossiallo, yeah, you can jump on it. Otherwise, need that person behind you to do some damage. Ball. That was her 50th walk of the year. And by taking that 50th walk and not chasing something out of the zone and inducing a pop-up or basically killing a rally. She takes the walk, allows her teammate to do the damage. Kinsey Hansen is the eighth to the plate in the inning. Grads trying to pick up their team. They have taken one to the jaw here in the bottom of the third. Hanson walks. Hey, the NBA Finals are underway tonight. Game one from out west, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on ABC and ESPN Radio. Celtics or Warriors, who you got? Game one coverage tips with NBA countdown at 8.30 Eastern. Great time of year. Get a couple of uh, different TVs going. Got softball at the World Series. Got uh, the NBA Finals going on. Got NHL Finals going on. Stanley Cup. Here's, here's Brito, so everybody's getting a crack at it this inning. Pops it up right side. On the run is Nito in foul territory. Two out. And Riley Boone will come up for the second time in the inning. That was Lauren Dvorak, number one. He saw hustling in from the bullpen into the dugout for Northwestern. Danielle Williams has thrown the vast majority of their innings in the regular season and even more in the postseason. They have relied heavily on her. About 92% of the innings pitched in this NCAA tournament for Northwestern have been Danielle's own. Got great mechanics, and she's obviously very fit. She's more of a spin pitcher than a power pitcher, so she can get away with those higher pitch counts, more days, more innings. chat with Holly Rowe. Next half in. Boone waits on it and drives it up the middle. Throw to the plate, not in time, and another run will score as Lions comes home. Six to one. How about Riley Boone's two hits this inning? The first was a double, just scorched to right field over the head of Rachel Lewis, and then this last one, she's actually beat on a changeup and just pokes it through, just kind of showing what Riley Boone can do. Watch, this almost looks like a slap. Her back knee just comes down because she's so beat pushing this one through. So one hit about 75 miles an hour off the bat, or maybe at 38 mile an hour, it doesn't matter. Still got another run for the Sooners. Wait, if you thought you'd get a little reprieve from the only two left-handers in the lineup, there are three for four now in the ball game. Janet Johns drove in a run with a single. Her first time up this inning. Now 
417 in the postseason. Herself for taking the bait. Well, that's, that's how you really know, and I'm sure that's what JT is talking with the team about like when you're sitting, and you can tell the, the hitters that are sitting. Look at Hope Troutline, sorry, yeah. in the dugout. She was like meditating, her eyes are closed, probably visualizing. It's pretty cool how loud this stadium is and for her to be totally somewhere else right now. If you're an Oklahoma pitcher, you gotta you gotta come up with some things to do during these long innings. They've had quite a few of them <laughs> over the course of the season. Oh, what's the, look at the, she got the cool mitt on that. And she's got to see how she's got her hand, her pitching hand over, so that's trying to keep yep. it above her heart, keep the fingers from swelling. Happens to a lot of rising spin ball pitchers. The fingers get a little fat, filled with fluid. And... Zedek under it, and finally for Northwestern, the inning comes to an end, but damage done by the Sooner Swingers, led by Tiari Jennings. They come into this inning, they're down one nothing. score a couple first, and then Tiari Jennings with the bases juiced. Sends this one out, puts four more up, and now the Sooners up on the Wildcats. 6-1 ahead of the top of the fourth. 76 RBI this season. That's third best in the country for the two-time first team All-American. She and Jada Coleman arriving last year as the top two recruits in the country. They have not disappointed. And they bookend Jocelyn Allo in that lineup. And how do the cats respond? Six, seven, eight coming up. See if Hope Troutwine can find that strike zone a little bit as well. She's walked four already, has struck out four. Zedek benefited from the free pass back in the second. Fly ball to Coleman. And back. Well, that's exactly what Hope Trap line needs right there, just inducing those easy pop-ups for defense to take care of. <laughs> Four walks in the game that ties the season high. Yeah, you know, I give that credit to Northwestern. Yeah. I mean, I feel like Phil Troutwine's found herself in a lot of three-two counts where she's also battling. She's throwing strikes. They're just fouling them off like that. And then taking what's close, understanding the difference between ball and strike. And Troutwine gets a lot of miss. She pitches out of the zone with that rise ball. And the Wildcats have done a good job of just kind of finding the ones in the zone they can hit. Five flyouts, one ground out. Kind of the, norm, the norm for Troutwine. And that rise ball at the top of the zone, that's the one that Northwestern has done a good job second time through the lineup trying to lay off of. Until they swing through it. There so that, and that, you know what though? That's exactly what good rise ball pitchers do. They'll, they'll, <laughs> they'll make you watch the strike, the low one, yeah. and then induce the swing on the high one. And it's, it's interesting how you can get the, as, as a rise ball pitcher in the psyche of the hitter, you watch that spin, the rotation, you're like, oh, I should have swung at that one. You see it again, you swing through it, it's at your eyes. But then taking the two strikes, that's what I've been impressed with, is the two strike takes that Northwestern has had. Well, 
Cows here in Oklahoma City for opening day of the Women's College World Series. Katie launches one out to right and boom, back on it, two down. I know that's routine, but I love her route to get there. This is a ball that's hit right to her over her head. And how many outfielders have we seen in the postseason that try to come in for a second? That's a double over her head, but she opens up, drop steps. Good defensive play. I think what's impressive about their defensive plays is that their pitchers, especially when Jordy Ball is pitching, they have a lot of strikeouts. So the defense doesn't get a lot of chances. So to be able to make that play when you don't have a lot of chances to see it, it's not like you're getting hits roped at you every yes. day. Yeah. And you make that play, it's impressive. Yes. I've been, you, I've been an outfielder when pitchers absolutely dominate and you don't see a ball for like <laughs> weeks. And when they hit it to you, it's usually like that. Like you gotta be able to react. And I, I just give credit, of course, to outfielders that are able to make the routine, actually the hard look routine. Yeah. Lauren Caldron is the pinch hitter here for Sydney Supley in the DP spot. You were a pretty good outfielder, if memory serves me correctly, Jessica Mendoza. We got we got great outfield representation here at the Women's College World Series. Is this the best outfield of all time? Caitlin Lowe now, the new head coach at her alma mater, Arizona, and Laura Burr getting Oregon State back to the Women's College World Series. Two on the right were pretty darn good, Ooh. I'll tell you that. I mean, the two Ooh. best center fielders of all time. When Laura Berg's yeah. playing right, you know, it's it's good. <laughs> I love that photo, by the way. It just makes me giddy because I yeah. love both of them roaming the outfield. Just try to hit it to us. Come on. <laughs> they are both in action tonight. Oregon State taking on Florida, Arizona against Oklahoma State. And there's that pesky rise ball again. There's with more velocity than Williams. And she'll step right in to face the leadoff, Jada Coleman, followed by Alo and Jennings. A 6-1 Oklahoma lead if this group right here can put up three more runs, then the run rule would be in effect for Northwestern in the top of the fifth inning. Something that perhaps may have been on Kate Drohan's mind, certainly on the minds of the Sooners who'd love to end this early. Remember the new format now this year, you win, you get a day off. And you don't have to play till Saturday. You win Saturday, you get another day off and don't have to play until the semifinals on Monday. Jada Coleman was getting pretty, you should see that left hand trying to call timeout. Borak has been quick pitching early. She got to the point where she was like fiercely saying to the umpire behind the plate, Lo, I want timeout and she's coming at me. Finally just got out of the batter's box. Struck out in the first, singled and scored in the third. On the Tiara Jennings grand slam. Oh. Taken on 3-0. Six run third inning. They sent 11 to the plate against the Big Ten Pitcher of the Year, Danielle Williams. And the leadoff walks. A pair of walks for Jocelyn Allo, her third uh, plate appearance of the afternoon. Look at the NCAA tournament, 643. You know, we talk about her power, but her batting average is best ever at OU as well. A regular season at 497, right? And she does even 100 points higher plus in the postseason. Incredible. Yeah, numbers reverse. When you get into the postseason, competition gets harder. Right? You're playing the best in the country. <laughs> You're always kind of saying, look, you know, she had a great regular season. This is why her postseason numbers are down. Not the case. For most of this Oklahoma team, but definitely Jocelyn Hall. She is the first position or utility player to win Player of the Year honors twice. The rest 
pitchers or pitchers who rake. Rachel Garcia, Kehlani Ricketts, Danielle Laurie, and Kat Osterman, who won it three times, the award that started in 2002. One by Stacy Newman, one of the other all-time slugging greats. Alo drives it down the line and left for a base hit. They'll hold her to a long single. It's the exit velocity to me. Like, this is a double <laughs> for anybody else, but she hits it so hard. Now, Grant, the outfield respecting her, playing her deep, this pitch middle away in that zone for Alo, but just the, the velocity that it leaves the bat when you one-hop the wall. And that's why it's not just power in home runs. It's also average, because every time she's putting barrel on, she hits it harder than anyone else in the country. Here's Jennings. Slam the change up. Straight away center. Not just to your point, they usually say in softball, if you can hit the ball off the bat, exit velocity over 70 miles an hour, it's going to be hit. That She hit that past the left fielder, like basically. <laughs> like, like she was a third baseman. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It was. That's how hard she hits the ball. And I would say she's high set. She's probably like her number, 78 miles per hour off the bat. Left field is the new hot corner for Jocelyn <laughs> Oliver right. when she's at the plate. <laughs> Which, by the way, compared to baseball, is 111 yeah. miles an hour Ooh. off the bat. Yeah. It's a wild pitch. Runners will advance. There's real time. <laughs> Just play it off the wall, by the way, before she's even on first base. That's blink of an eye speed right there. 3 0 to Jennings. just feast on each other's success. Now they change the count on us, or is it three and one for TRA? And she walks to load them up for Grace Lyons. A strikeout and a base hit for Grace, scored a run in the third. Grace, along with Jennings and Alo, over 20 home runs on the season. Both sides will get together and chat. A reminder that we are uh, not even halfway home yet on this opening day from Oklahoma City. Do up next, the Beavers of Oregon State, the Gators of Florida. OSU looking for a first national championship. Florida, two titles. And repping the SEC that took it on the chin this postseason. They are uh, gunning for the first championship in the SEC since they got it in 2015. Is that our drone spy cam, by the way, oh, over yeah. the Beavers? That, we got a first oh, look at that. All kinds of goodies. This series? Toys. It's toys. Look See, that uh, looks like a uh, pinch runner for Alo out at second. Alo can re-enter. That's Hannah Core. Here we go, loaded for the second time. This is Grace Lyons. Last time they were here, Grand Slam, Tiara Jennings. They average two and a half home runs per game and have hit homers in 50 of their 56 tilts this year. Mind you, a lot of those are only five innings. Yes, <laughs> that's what's incredible. Right back up the middle, base hit, one run is in. They wave around Cole to the plate, and she's in there. Two-run single, Grace Lyons.
Trace Lyons is a big swinger in that four spot. She protects T.R.A. Jennings, and she's going to get a pitch on the outer half that's diving down. She doesn't do too much with it. She just barrels that up, puts it through the middle, especially with the infield in. Really good job of picking up an 0-2 pitcher's mistake and driving that up the middle. Slow, but it's too much over the plate. And good hitters, they feast on anything over the white, even if it is a little bit low. RBI opportunity for Lindsey Elam. A couple of walks, a couple of hits in the inning, and nobody out. Fifth year out of Chickasha, Oklahoma. Golf's one out to right, and that will fall foul. That was funky. <laughs> that was like almost off the top of the bat. Serious spin on it. That was a shanked eight iron right there. There you go. <laughs> I've had a few of those. <laughs> That's why I recognized it so quick. <laughs> oh, there's the draw. Oh, there it is. Coming in. So, oh, just spectacular here, the double deck. Brand new press box a couple years ago. Hey, if you're looking for Around the Horn, coming up at the top of the hour, that will be starting on ESPN2. Jennings and Lyons aboard for Lindsey Elam. To short, snared by Maeve Nelson, one down. Sooners, last time they were on this field, Big 12 tournament final, they lost to Oklahoma State, only their second loss of the season. When we talked to Patty Gasso about it, she had a great line. She said, when we get beat, we get better. And at the World Series, it's all about show up and execute. And they have shown up and they have executed. And that runner out at second base, if she touches home plate, brings the run rule into effect in the next Northwestern at bat. Taylor Snow will hit here for Kinsey Hansen. Another wild pitch, runners move up. Well, now a Sack Fly could get in that ninth room. Second of the inning for Dvorak. The advantage for the teams that win in this new format, obviously a disadvantage for the teams that lose because you're going to turn around and play again right around this time tomorrow night. Win or go home on our Friday night to BBQ. And Snow draws the walk, and they are loaded this time for Alyssa Brito. Third walk this inning. Yeah. That's been Dvorak's Achilles heel. She's at 23 walks on the season. 50 plus innings pitched. Sydney Supley just came running in from the bullpen into the dugout. <laughs> Brito struck out in the second, popped up in the third, and she steps in with the bases loaded. If they get the run home from third, the run rule is in effect for Northwestern in the fifth inning. The big blow, already a grand slam. Tiare Jennings in the third. 
Brito up now, the only Sooner in the starting lineup not to reach base this game. Believe me, you know it's you. <laughs> when your whole team's <laughs> heading around, you're aware. Yes, there are a couple things you're aware of. When you don't reach, and if you've made two outs in an inning, <laughs> <laughs> when, yes. you, when your team bats through, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's not a good feeling either. Shipley's got her down, 0-2. Missed away. Have to protect on that pitch. You know, I was right? going to say, because yeah. she's so far off the plate, which yep. a lot of sooner righties are, and that was like off the plate away, and their ability to reach, especially with just to waste it. Yeah, especially with those two strikes. Protect your at bat. Ah! Infield pop up. Nito calling for it. Two down. And it's Riley Boone, who's two for two. Patty Gasso talking to Holler Row between innings, talking about how important it was in the third going down one nothing to immediately respond. Riley Boone being in the eight hole did that with her double, of course, getting a single after that last inning. Well, it's interesting because she didn't get her at for her first at bat until the bottom, the, the third inning, and then she got two hits in the third <laughs> inning. <laughs> they brought 11 to the plate and scored six times. They've tagged on two more here in the fourth, and we're looking for more. Well, Riley thought it hit her. The umpire said nope. Ball one, and now Patty Gasso coming out. Got oh, that Velcro. It actually, I think it's her card. It is her card. It, it, it's her, yeah. That's almost not fair. No, it's yeah, hanging that's over. Mm -hmm. right. So that's your signal, her signal card, it almost looks like. and that will get a run in. Naomi Erdahl, the home plate umpire, and that makes it 9-1. All right, I don't know if it's a rule change here. I think that needs to be reconsidered yeah. as a pitcher. Yeah. I'm just as a hitter, I agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the strap should be a part of it, but... At any rate, nine to one Sooners, and the bases are still loaded for Janet Johns. Johns goes oppo, drifting foul. Down the right field line. Now towards the grounds crew. Done a terrific job. There was a lot of rain here yesterday. Fields looking good today. Double header this afternoon, double header tonight. And then with the new format, you would not have to play two games in one day unless you were in the national semifinals. That's a possibility on Monday. And they would be back-to-back, -back, the if necessary, game. Yes, right? which which I actually like that too, yes. and I think that the athletes, the coaches, would prefer that than having two or three hours off, mm -hmm. waiting for another game to be played, and then you come back out for that if necessary. Just to follow up too on um, Strapgate, is that what we're going to call it? <laughs> yes, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> not not only change that rule that clothing doesn't count, but also 
you have to make an attempt to get out of the way. Janet Johns, deep fly ball, and back it goes! Second grand slam of the game for Oklahoma! When your number nine hitter can go yard and hit your second grand slam of the game, you know you have a powerful offense. Johns from that right side going at opposite field. So much power on this Boomer Sooner team. A rise ball that is just too close to the plate. She's gonna go get it and drive it the other way. She knew it immediately yes. off the bat. Her 12th home run of the year. Just step into that ball. And that's one of the things the Sooners do so good, protecting that outer half of the plate. Well, the ability to go opposite field. Yeah. I mean, y'all see the towering shots you pull. That power opposite field is, is not as common. We had not seen a Grand Slam at the World Series since the epic Emily Carasoni Grand Slam in the 2016 Championship Series for Auburn, ironically enough, over Oklahoma that day. And now we've seen two Grand Slams in two innings. Tiara Jennings and Jana Johns, 13 to one Sooners. Well, at least that removes all doubt about Strapgate. Uh, they still have the run rule in effect into the fifth <laughs> inning. <laughs> and that means that Northwestern is down to its final three outs. And yeah, their still, next at bat. Still uh, change it for the future anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Loser of this one will play 12-time national champion UCLA tomorrow night. The winner gets the day off. They'll meet Texas Saturday afternoon on ABC in the winner's bracket. There you go. Family gets the home run ball. Future sooner. Maybe she'll be back here one day. Yeah. Ground ball, and that will squirt away from Katie out into left. Coleman is on for the second time today. How about Janet Johns? Look at pitch location and then where she hits it. The only place you're really going to hit this with power is to go to right field. You try to pull this, maybe you get a base hit that you get around, but the understanding of not only what you're hunting for these Sooner hitters, but where to hit it. Janet Johns, second grand slam of this game. And just to your point, right, they, they don't try to get around it. They don't try to hook that outside pitch and hit it over the left field fence. They take it to the right field fence. And, I mean, that, that's just discipline hitting. The 13 runs, by the way, is the best for an Oklahoma team in their World Series history. And here comes Jocelyn Olo. A couple of walks and a base hit. So this is two innings in a row that they are sending 11 to the plate. A six run third, a seven run fourth. Ah! over the course of her career averaging a home run about every six at bats it's crazy that's that like is. every other game so every other game basically yeah. exactly wow and knowing how much she gets walked so she doesn't even get the opportunities yep. and when she does oh chased one out of the zone 
Yeah, absolutely. It is. Uh, you know, it's one of the first thing I always ask pitchers: Are you throwing a two seam rise ball or a yes. four seam rise ball? Pinch hitter here is Kendall Peterson, and it's something you hear in baseball all the time: two seam versus four seam, and the difference of movement that it'll get. In fact, one goes up, the other goes down. That's how dramatic where you, which seams you hold. Right. That's what it does with the ball. Right, and with the rise ball, you're you're typically also tucking that index finger so you get a little more push underneath the ball to really get it to, you know, to rotate in that backward rotation of, you know, depending if you're left-handed or right-handed, 1 o'clock to 7 o'clock or straight up and down, 6 to 12. 2-0 -oh from Troutwine, and the run rule is in effect. So as long as Oklahoma can maintain at least an eight-run lead, the game would end right here with three outs. Daddy Gasser talking to two-time national chief, Sidney Romero. I'm able to check the swing. The Grand Slams, plural, two of them today for Oklahoma, are the first Grand Slams in their World Series history, 15 times they've been here. So another record-setting day for the Sooner hitters. One thing moving forward that Hope will look to clean up are the walks. That's her fifth. Season high. As it stands, Oklahoma would face a familiar foe. Winners bracket Saturday, the Texas Longhorns, who they took two of three from in the regular season, but it was the Horns who handed them their first loss of the year after Oklahoma started out 38 and 0. Got a pinch runner now in the ball game for Northwestern. That's Nito re-entering. Schumeyer has struck out a couple of times on that rise ball. Strikeouts for Hope. <laughs> Called strike three, and they sit down Schellmeyer, the leadoff for the third straight time. One of the three strikeouts, two of them are looking. This one is that rise ball again on the outside corner, the pitch that Hope can kind of cut up and away. It's got a little bit of that screwball action. We like to call the scries. You can see just painting the corner on the outside corner, Schellmeyer letting it go by. Lewis is out in front. The walk in the first for Rachel, and then the solo home run on a 3 2 pitch in the third that briefly gave the Cats a 1 0 lead. 13 unanswered runs since. All Mike Burwell, Chris Neighbors, Paul Eds. The umpires today. Don't forget, two more games still to come. Seven Eastern on ESPN, Florida, Oregon State, and Oklahoma State, Arizona. Big hit from Rachel Lewis, the home run. 
back to the third, first of either team to score. I mean, it feels like a totally different game ago. You're kind of going, okay. Look at Northwestern taking a lead on Oklahoma the first time this postseason. And actually, Lewis now has backed off the plate. Approach, I think, looking for something. Get a barrel two again. Call strike three. Two down. And an out away from winning their opener at the World Series for Oklahoma. She gets the low rise. She sees the spin and she holds because she's like, this is going to go up out of the zone. It maybe clips the very top of the zone. This is where rise ball pitchers can be so nasty. Throwing one for a strike and then another out of the zone and it looks the same out of the hand. And look at this. On their feet for the return of Jordy Ball to the circle. Their ace who went out with an injury about a month ago has not made an appearance since May 6th. And the National Freshman of the Year will try and get the final out for Oklahoma. Quite a scene here this afternoon in Oklahoma City. Enter Sandman and enter Jordy Ball. Beth Mowens, Michelle Smith, Jessica Mendoza. We heard from Patty Gasso yesterday. Expect to see Jordy Ball back in the circle. We don't know when, we don't know where, but here it is in the opener to try and get the final out. Uh, and you, you talk about the, the excitement around that. I mean, everyone on their feet and the anticipation. This is the big storyline coming in. We know how dominant Oklahoma is, but would they have their ace? And we're getting a look at it right now. Well, and it's kind of a statement. They need one more out to finish this game, and they put her in in this situation. So I think this is a little bit like, hey, don't sleep on us. We still have our ace able to throw. We're going to put her in here to finish things off. She's got to wrap around that forearm that Holly Rowe reported for us earlier. She injured on a routine throw over to first base. And with that swagger and a little bit of smoke, Jordy Ball will tow the rubber. And of course, the first pitch in for a strike. Out of Papillion, Nebraska, the high school national player of the year, the freshman of the year just awarded this week. And the Pac-12 co-pitcher of the year with Kelly Maxwell of Oklahoma State facing Jordan Rudd, one out away from a win. Interesting though, because of their lead, the fact that there's one out. Patty Gasso going to her here, it still doesn't answer a lot of the questions. Sorry, two outs, one, only one out for them to get. Still not sure long term, right? Yes. How, how many innings yes. she could go? Could she start, perhaps? Ah! Well, and I can almost kind of see the way that her arm is passing her body, that she's making sure it, it does not brush her body. She did admit that it's still painful at times when she throws. And, you know, as a pitcher, there's a difference between a, a, a brush and when you really kind of bash or hit off of the side of your body on your hip. <laughs> Northwestern down to a final strike. That off speed that she can throw so effectively. Right. 
bit of everything. <laughs> Our first two games of this World Series. The upset for Texas over 12-time national champion UCLA. And now for the Sooners, not one, but two grand slams. And the return of Jordy Ball to the circle. Rudd drops it in fair, base hit. Second time she's been on base today. That's a heck of an at-bat. I mean, I'm sure she was not excited to see Jordy Ball come into this game with one out of this game left for them to fight. Jordan Rudd worked that count, ended up getting a hit to extend this game. Maeve Nelson popped up in the first, walked in the third. Outside corner for a strike. They had some great pitching in the circle, their defense, but it's really all about that offense putting up massive runs. Well, and it's maybe the response. I mean, that's the yeah. thing. It's, it's a test when you are the number one seed. You are the team that's supposed to absolutely dominate everyone. And a team like Northwestern comes in, goes up one zip, and what they do right away immediately, bottom half of that inning, is they responded. 